This is the Samsung Galaxy S3. Uh, at the time, this was the game changer. Unfortunately, its following predecessors didn't really change any games, but instead started boring the tech community. Fast forward to present and Samsung's done it again by redeeming themselves in the eyes of gadget lovers everywhere with their offerings of the Samsung Galaxy S6 and Galaxy S6 Edge. What's up guys, Jared here, and spoiler alert, I really dig this phone, so let's get into why. Well, everyone's been begging Samsung to get into some more premium build materials like metal and or glass. Uh, it might have taken a while, but they delivered, and boy, did they do it right. Uh, of course, there's the argument that with Gorilla Glass 4 on the front and back of the device that it'll be a fingerprint magnet. Well, if you get the white version, then you'll probably have a harder time noticing them, but on my sapphire black version, yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, so if it bugs you that much, just go get a scanner case and problem solved. Anyway, Samsung's thrown on a really nice metal band going around the whole phone with a sort of satin finish to it, which I'm really digging, by the way. And at the top, oh, oh. Would you look at that? A SIM card slot, because yes, Samsung did away with not only a removable back for swapping out your SIM cards, but also a removable battery and micro SD slot. Now, I'm not gonna get into the whole whether this is a good thing or bad thing discussion, but I will say this, while I know they've pissed off a lot of their super fans, I personally don't mind at all. Uh, I don't use micro SD cards anymore, nor have I ever needed to swap out a battery. Uh, I either just bring a small power bank with me or sometimes even a car charger, but that's just me. Now taking a glance at the bottom, you can see why Samsung's gotten some flack for copying the iPhone design, but you know what? That's another thing I just don't care about. Uh, it doesn't look bad, otherwise you'd probably hear me complaining right now. Uh, and then we arrive on that curved display. So the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge is $100 more than the standard S6 simply because of that display. Uh, is it worth it over the standard S6? Well, here's my thoughts. When it comes to functionality, it's not all that it's hyped up to be. Uh, actually, let me rephrase that. The curve isn't all that it's hyped up to be, but it is pretty awesome. I do like some of the options, like the People Edge app that's tucked off to the edge of the screen, which gives you quick access to your favorite contacts with a swipe of your thumb. And the night clock is pretty sweet, seeing as I don't have a clock next to my bed and I don't like leaving Android's daydream feature on. Uh, but other than that, I'm not a fan of placing my phone face down to take advantage of edge lighting, which simply lights up when receiving a phone call or notification. I just don't normally place my phone face down, and I just don't think it's something Thing I could or even would like to get used to. And the info stream is a neat idea, but in actual everyday use, I never, not once, found an appropriate time to use it. Like if I'm at my desk, all my daily social media and news events are right in front of my face at all times. And if I was out and about, pulling it out of my pocket and swiping from left to right to activate it, and then swiping down through the streams, it's just kind of weird and awkward feeling. Uh, but don't get that all twisted with me hating on it because it's quite the opposite for me actually. Uh, I really dig the curved edges. It feels like nothing else when swiping from screen to screen. And I love how text and images just sort of fall off the display. It kind of reminds me of one of those sweet infinity pools. But I think what gets me most about it is that it brings me back to my childhood when imagining mobile communication devices looking like this was simply that just imagination. But now, to hold a device that to me looks like something from the future just brings a smile to my face every time I pull it out of my pocket. So is it worth an extra hundred bucks? Well, to me it was, and it might be to you too. But no, it's certainly not for everyone, and consequently might not be worth a hundred dollars more to everyone. But I love it and think it's a step in the right futuristic direction. Now with regards to the actual display image and quality, uh, it's amazing. Everyone I've shown it to is blown away by the sharpness and the vibrant colors. And it's really no surprise because the S6 Edge comes with the exact same screen as the standard S6, which is Samsung Quad HD Super AMOLED display. And at a very respectable 5.1 inches, it brings us that 1440 by 2560 resolution for a grand total of 577 pixels per inch. So text is razor sharp and images look amazing, but with it being an AMOLED display, you'd expect colors to be a lot more saturated than with the more natural colors that the LCD displays can produce. But it appears Samsung has dialed it down a little, still more saturated than LCDs, but 
but not as much as in previous models. And moving on to software, Samsung's greatly improved upon its infamously feature and bloatware heavy TouchWiz. Uh, say what you will about TouchWiz, but I think Samsung's finally done a phenomenal job scaling back on both. Diving into the app tray, you'll notice right away the lack of Samsung and quote unquote value added services. Though you'll see we've still got things like S Health, which makes sense seeing as there's still a heart rate monitor next to the camera, as well as all the standard Samsung apps like S Planner, S Voice, and their music and video player. And then from there, jumping over to the settings and more specifically the motions and gestures, or as I used to call them until now, Harry Potter features. Uh, see how it's not all crazy in there anymore? There's four options, four. That's what you call finally manageable. And you know what? A lighter skin usually equals better overall device performance, and that seems to be the case here. But just like I said in my HTC One M9 review, the guts that go into flagship phones these days just fly. That said, powering this spaceship is Samsung's own mobile processor, the Octa-Core Exynos 7420, with dual quad cores running at 1.5 and 2.1 gigahertz respectively. A Mali T760 MPA GPU for that beautiful display and graphics, and three gigs of RAM to top it all off. Uh, the only little tiny gripe I have that ties in with both hardware and software is the fingerprint reader. So it's a huge improvement over the previous iteration. Huge! And I use it for a week straight, using it to unlock my phone hundreds of times, and I loved it. But it's slow sometimes and then other times is just as fast as swiping. It's that very inconsistency that causes me to sometimes hold my finger on the reader for much longer than needed and sometimes let go too quickly thinking it's already read my finger. So because of that, I decided to revert back to my completely security-free swipe to unlock because I'm lazy and impatient, don't judge me. But other than that, there's been absolutely no slowdown, stutters, or frames dropped in my testing. Everything's pretty snappy, except for the app drawer animation. Like, is it just me or is it painfully slow? It doesn't even change if you turn all the animation settings and the developer options to off. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make here is that the software is way more refined, making TouchWiz quite bearable and actually kind of pleasant. Uh, I'll let you be the judge there. So now, with regards to the camera, boy is it a beast. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to express how awesomely convenient it is to be able to launch the camera app just by double pressing the home button. Uh, even when the device is sleeping, just double press the home button and you're ready to shoot. Uh, the mode selection menu is still there with awesome features like selective focus, which works really well on the S6. A virtual shot, which I'm not really a fan of because it's as if you're just recording a short video and it just allows you to scrub through it. And then of course we still have both slow and fast motion video recording options, but now you'll notice we've got the new pro mode, which gives you manual control over things like the exposure metering mode, uh, focus, white balance. ISO, exposure, but there's also this little tone adjustment tool where you can pick from several predefined tones or custom create your own. Now, the camera itself is a 16 megapixel shooter and it produces some amazing pictures. The sharpness and clarity is definitely there, but doesn't look as overly processed with no visible strange artifacting as photos did back when I reviewed the Galaxy Note 4, so I was really stoked to see that. Colors pop and the auto exposure is almost perfect. Almost every shot I took, the picture was properly exposed, and what's more, even in very low lighting, Samsung's done an amazing job at handling noise. Just take a look at this shot in my living room with literally no lighting other than what's coming in through the blinds. And now look at the wall next to the TV. Very little noise, or at least the noise has been dolled out. Uh, pretty impressive stuff here, guys. And to my eyes, the dynamic range that this camera puts out is arguably the best on the market right now. I mean, it may not be the most natural looking pictures ever. I'd have to give that award to the Sony Xperia's 20 megapixel sensor, where everything is a lot more natural. But you know what? Personally, I actually prefer my pictures looking really punchy. Oh, and even though I won't be showing you any 4K video footage from the S6 Edge in this video, I do plan on putting out a cinematic camera test with it, so keep an eye out for that. It should be pretty epic. Anyways, bottom line, if you're thinking about getting the S6 or S6 Edge just for the camera, go for it. You will not be disappointed. So in addition to Samsung giving most of us what we want with better build materials and a scaled back touch with, they've also finally given us built-in wireless charging. So no need to go buy some overpriced case to take advantage of that. 
Now, just throw it on a Qi charger and charge away. Though don't expect it to take advantage of that fast charging technology because wireless charging is notoriously slow. Okay, so I know everyone's been up in arms about the S6 and S6 Edge having small batteries with a 2550 milliamp hour battery for the S6 and a 2600 milliamp hour battery for the S6 Edge. Well, while yes, it'd be pretty easy to drain in a few hours while watching video content, for example, uh, I usually don't. And if I do plan on using my phone for entertainment for hours, I usually bring backup charging solutions. That said, with an average day, unplugging from the charger at about 10 a.m., I managed about 11 hours of battery usage with two hours and 23 minutes of screen on time. So basically, it should last you your entire workday as long as you're not just sitting there the entire workday watching videos and playing games. But taking a look at what was doing most of the draining, aside from the screen and hangouts, is the infamous Google Play services. So obviously there's another wake lock bug issue, but in addition to that, I had Wi-Fi data and Bluetooth on. Uh, the brightness at 100% most of the time, and my social media apps passively updating as new posts and tweets arrive. So with some of those connections turned off, the display brightness down to 50%, I probably could have snuck another hour or so of screen on time. So if you're planning on getting a Samsung Galaxy S6 or S6 Edge, go for it. It's an awesome phone. The quality of pictures it takes looks phenomenal. Uh, it's blazing fast in day-to-day -day operations. The screen looks simply amazing, not to mention the awesome feel in the hand those dual curved edges gives you, and the battery life is adequate enough to get you through a full workday. Uh, in my opinion, Samsung hit it out of the park with the S6 and S6 Edge, and I'd have no hesitation recommending it to anyone. Well, that's it for this one, guys. Like I mentioned before, I'll be putting out a fun cinematic camera test on this device soon, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. But yeah, if you like this video and want to see more from me, do both of us a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. But thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.